You're tuned into It's Real Podcast with your hosts, Kayla Callender and Andrew Yagi. Each week, we'll talk about what happens behind the scenes working full time in real estate and share with you real life stories, our successes, and failures as we work to help consumers and industry professionals reach their real estate and real life goals. Here we go. It's episode 28 of the It's Real podcast. I'm Andrew Yegi. I'm a real estate agent. I'm Kayla Callender and I'm a mortgage lender. Kayla, how's your week going? So great. How about yours, Andy? You know, it's really going well. It's uh, nice. Like I'm looking out my office window right now. The sun is shining, you know, just coming off of the Thanksgiving holiday. It was really, really great, um, you know, yeah. having Thanksgiving off and then, you know, kind of a longer weekend. Um, I kind of needed it, Kayla. Oh, yeah. What did you guys do for Thanksgiving? So we ended up heading up to Fargo, uh, hanging out with my mom's side of the family. Uh, it was great. We were kind of pondering staying home and invited my parents to come because my three siblings were, uh, you know, hanging out with their other sides uh, mm -hmm. of the family. But I just thought, you know what, it would be great to not have to cook everything yeah. and probably not have leftovers. In fact, I think it was the most disciplined I've ever been um, oh, right. at a holiday meal. So I will count that as a victory. I would too. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. What did you and uh, Taryn and the pups do? Uh, we hosted. We hosted a small group and it was very intimate. You know, I'm the youngest of six and I've got 18 nieces and nephews. So usually I'm used to the hustle and bustle. But this year we hosted because as you know, families, you know, as you grow, as you get older and you get married, you kind of do your own thing, like you said. So we hosted a few people and it was a pretty chill um, weekend. I also took a day off, which was rare and it was also needed. So awesome. Good win. for you. Thank you. I'm very proud Any, of myself. Anything notable about your family gathering or, or anything fun? No. <laughs> Nothing that I can think of. Pretty just chill. The, that's about it. <laughs> Anything notable yeah, no, for you, Andy? Nothing remarkable, although you did come up several times at Thanksgiving. I had several relatives ask, including my grandma, Andy, who is that that cute girl that, that you do your podcast with? So oh. I, had to, I had to tell the Kayla, the Kayla story and meeting at NDSU and everything. So um oh. Kayla, even though sometimes we think people aren't listening or aren't watching, I, I still, I have a lot of conversations with people. Mm -hmm. People see kind of, you know, what we're talking about. And and uh, I have people stop me all the time that say, hey, you know what, I, I was listening and, and and that was really helpful. So Awesome. And I don't know if I ever told you, but I had a girl from Arizona reach out um, and she's a realtor. And she said she just saw me like someone's comment on Instagram, followed us and you know, sometimes if people don't like your post or, you know, when we use social media, just because they're not commenting or liking or sharing doesn't mean it's not being seen. So to anyone that has a podcast or anyone that's posting on social media, just because people aren't commenting or clicking anything, you're still being seen. So I hope yeah. that we provide value. Yeah, just do it. And I mean, even like with video in general, and the thing that I love most, Kayla, and even if nobody did listen to or watch this, um, you know, if nothing else, it, it gives me an opportunity to connect with you, which I really appreciate and enjoy, you know, just because, I mean, you're kind of the, the go-to mortgage hustler and, you know, really, I would say you're a pillar of the Fargo-Moorhead community, oh. Kayla, just with everything that you do in real estate, also out in the community, you know, like for the animal shelter, among many other things. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really appreciate, if nothing else, being able to connect with you, but I know that we're making a difference and I'm very, again, thankful for you and thankful for this opportunity. I would also echo, you know, I had, uh, I, I always ask myself, is it worth doing video? And I've had a lot of video goals, Kayla, uh, as we talk about all the time. I mean, I'm not ever going to be the queen of TikTok like you are or, or Insta Reels or whatever. Although we're going to step up our game. Mm -hmm. But in the new year, it's one of my goals. But even this morning, Kayla, just before you know, we connected right now to shoot. I had another real estate agent call me who's been working with a client who has a very, very unique property that they've been, you know, trying to subdivide and, and develop and just said, you know what, Andrew, I'm, I'm not sure that we can give them any more, but, you know, I know you, I like you, I see what you're doing out there. I think yeah. I'm going to send them your direction. 
and uh, oh, wow. go help them help them reach their goals. So I thought, I mean, that was I was flattered and thought, wow, that's awesome. Something else because usually I think we feel like in this business and we see Kayla, even I'm sure you with other lenders and me with other agents, like it's cutthroat. And I know that I haven't always had the warm the warmest reception just because I'm coming in. I've grown fast. Right. And, taking business from other people and, you know, people, especially some of the older guard don't always like that. No, you're taking a piece of the pie, but I think too is you can be seasoned in your career. You can have 40 years under your belt, but that doesn't mean that you're the best person to assist somebody. And I think to your comment about video is, you know, we see magazines and billboards and we see people advertising. It's, it's not new. People have advertised for years. I mean, think of Coca-Cola. And if you can have a free vehicle to share with the world, I mean, you realtors are okay knocking on someone's door and it's a stranger, but some realtors and lenders are afraid to hit post and you can reach thousands for free. And right. so it's just, it, when people are aware of you, it just brands credibility as well. And they get to know you as a person. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Kayla, I had a unique experience this week. I, I should have gotten a picture, but I didn't. But I was in speaking to a sixth grade class. They're kind oh. of working on a uh, creative writing uh, project. And from the standpoint of working uh, as a real estate agent at uh, Reindeer Realty. And so I kind of went in as an agent, kind of talked about, hey, what do real estate agents do? And uh, the teacher asked that I dress the part, so I wore kind of a reindeer sweater and 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 That's light, awesome. and really had a great time uh, kind of connecting Aww. with the class. So it's kind of fun to get out. And yeah. I you know, in sixth grade again, I wouldn't want to go back to that, but it's no. uh, you know kind of fun catching. Oh, up. that's awesome! Did you know that I went and spoke to a group of high schoolers too, like in the I last did. week or two? I did not know that. Tough crowd, but. Really? I told them to follow my TikTok and Instagram and now we're best friends. So, but you know, it's, on their level, Kayla, I'm like, okay. I'm like, we're not talking about this. Get out your phones. Like it was, you have to relate and know that, you know, talking to sixth graders, like that's hard, but you it know, we're, we're there to educate and help. So speaking of educating and helping and well, we'll get to that piece, but I want to backtrack to Thanksgiving because last mm. week, Kayla, we made a, promise to our listeners and viewers and what was that our promise was we were going to provide a gift of gratitude yes. to anyone that commented on our we would choose if someone commented on our live facebook video so and we did a look and i think you had a couple on on your on your personal um feed so i think you got a comment from tammy and Tony, Tony that says, Tony. Kayla, we trust. <laughs> Kayla, we trust. <laughs> oh, gosh. And I think I can just see one share, but oh, your mom shared it. Oh, thank God my mom's been so great lately. She's she's no longer working, so she has the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that. And hey, I mean, I'll, I'll give a, a plug. Uh, my brother, Alex, uh, he did. Uh, he asked me to oh, pick yeah. him, pick him. And I had a couple thank of uh, other likes as well. So, hey. I will take care of my people, Kayla. You take care of your people. Sounds like a plan. Gift of gratitude. Here we come. Gratitude. I love it. So. All right. Well, let's get down to business, Kayla. Let's do it. Um, first of all, let's talk about, you know, kind of what we talk about quite often. You know, what are rates doing? What are you seeing in the market from a mortgage standpoint? So we've seen them pretty flat, but overall, it's been kind of a gentle decline. Um, the 30 year fix is those that are viewing can see, um, according to mortgagenewsdaily.com, 7.3% 30 year fix conventional. Um, so a lot better. I mean, at one point we saw eight and above, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we're finding, you know, I told someone today what their rate was and they're like, great, awesome. We're moving forward. So it's not preventing people from taking that next step, but it is making people still pause and say, should I do this? Does this make sense? Right. And I think uh, another great program you like to reference, of course, Minnesota has some great um, programs, but North Dakota housing and some of their wonderful options uh, and rates yeah. that are quite a bit less. Yeah, I actually locked someone um, at 6.15 last week. She is a first time home buyer. She's uh, an FHA buyer, 6.15. And you can see that on there. 
Um, wow. If she would have paid a little bit called discount points, so one and a half percent of her loan amount, so 1.5% would have gotten her a lower rate. Even that option is fabulous. Um, and then down below, as we've spoken about before, if you're a repeat buyer or you make above a certain income limit, uh, you're going to be at a little bit higher rate. And that's where that roots program comes in. So still pretty comparable, I mean, to what the national is, but sure. sometimes we see them do this, but it's an option. Yeah. No one is mm -hmm. have options. Speaking of options, um, you know, we had talked about as well that Fannie and Freddie, that they are upping the loan limits for 2024. And so Kayla, Tell us what it means, because I don't even have a great grasp of it. <laughs> That's OK. That's what I'm here for. So so a lot of people see on their Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. Oh, OK, cool. The loan limit increased. What does that mean? Why do I care? So the simplest way to put this is that once you have a loan size that gets beyond a certain dollar amount, it's called a jumbo. And jumbo has more red tape. There's, you might need more money in the bank. The rate could be higher. There are just more things that go along with the program. It's difficult, a little bit more difficult to finance, especially mm -hmm. if you're self-employed. So what Fannie and Freddie has is a loan limit. So 766, 550 is the limit. So Andy, if you were buying a house and your loan was going to be 770, you would then be in jumbo territory. So mm -hmm. we might say, hey, Andy, if you put a little bit more down, let's get you to that limit that we just showed. Then you're going to have a different rate. Potentially, you're going to have different guidelines. And it's typically just an easier program when you're not doing a jumbo loan. That's pretty much the most simple way to put it. Sure. No, that makes perfect sense. I thought it was interesting. So, you know, kind of at first glance, that looks like, you know, quite a jump because, you know, this article was talking about the fact that what was it last year? 724. 727,200. Again. So, and they have like the weirdest amounts. They can't just be like flat. So they've changed a few times, but yeah, that's quite a jump, right? So yeah. the cool part is when home prices increase, we know that the loan amount is going to increase. So we want to make sure that people are taken care of when it comes to being able to get a conforming loan versus a jumbo loan. Sure. That makes sense. I was very interested, you know, kind of reading this, you know, that I talked about that even though this is a pretty large jump, that it actually is a lesser jump than in past years. But of course, you know, it talks mm -hmm. about it being tied, um, you know, Congress has mandated that the conforming loan limit be tied to annual increases um, you know, in the housing price index, more mm -hmm. or less. And, mm -hmm. you know, I talked about home prices were up five and a half percent from a year ago as mm -hmm. of September 30th, which is a considerable slowdown from the 12 and a half percent annual home price appreciation, the same point in 2022, mm -hmm. which I also thought was really interesting. And Kayla, I think kind of brings us to, you know, another article that I popped up in kind of our greater topic today. Um, you know, we look at overall and, and the, the million dollar question is what's going on in the economy? Because, you know, we've seen, you know, yeah. kind of mini or micro, um, uh, you know, declines in, in or, you know, kind of depressions and a variety of different industries. And yeah. everybody keeps looking at housing and just like this, this can't be sustainable. This can't yeah. keep going on forever. In fact, Kayla, you know, 35 percent of Americans, they say, are hoping the housing market will crash in 2024 based on a recent lending tree survey. What do you make of that? I think that, how do I say this? The market doesn't have emotions like people do. So we can have negative emotions towards the market. We can talk about the market and how this is terrible. But at the end of the day, the market is the market. There's pros and cons in every single market, right? So. I think people are just hoping that a lot of times, and this this is my own opinion, but it's like, I want this to be torn down so that I can then benefit. So people are just really hoping for lower rates. They're hoping that they can get homes at a discount. That truly is the hope. But in reality, there are so many benefits in this market today 
that I think it's just overshadowed by, by the rates. And, um, I'm not surprised at the data. Um, I'm not surprised that people feel that way, but how, how do you feel? Well, I, I, I can d definitely appreciate the sentiment, you know, just because especially looking at the largest group of home buyers, so millennials age, what, roughly yeah. 34, 35, who are really having trouble getting into a home. And even some of the buyers I've been working with lately, they're coming, they're trying to find housing. Um, it, it's really, really challenging in affordability you know, is, is pushing people to the brink, you know, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, I look at some of my, um, you know, my rental property tenants and, you know, even recently have had a lot of people who have been behind on payments. And luckily there are great programs out there that kind of help them as they're going through difficult times. But realistically, you know, the, the price of everything, you know, has increased and, and it puts maybe pressure on everyone. So you throw, increase housing prices, you throw interest rates that are, you know, at, at near record highs, and it, it makes things uh, very, very challenging. It does. And I think you just hit it. It's like everything is going up. So then it's just the cherry on top that the interest rates are changing too. And, you know, you have to be making a lot more money to be able to afford the home now. And I think I look at it two different ways, Andy. It's like, you know, people we're looking at two, three, four percent when, yes, that was a great time to buy. And people that are in those rates, yes, they're paying less. But I think we also need to look at it as maybe were we as consumers viewing that as as that is the norm. And so now it's like we can't afford that. Were our sights set too high? We're, and that's where I've been wondering how the consumer is feeling mm -hmm. is were they basing the, you know, their dream home off of this rate when in reality they should have been thinking something else. Now there's no right or wrong answer, but at the end of the day, it's frustrating and it's emotional and we need to be those um, market leaders and educators to find ways, Hey, if this doesn't work, can we try this? And we really need to strategize. And my message today to people that are feeling that heaviness or, hopelessness is still meet with lenders, still meet with realtors. I had a girl the other day that didn't know if she should sell. And I said, contact your realtor and find out, you know, what you think it's worth. Like, let's talk. So many people are quick to say, I've read the headlines. I'm done. I'm not even going to look at anything, but it's really cool. Andy, to see people that after they speak with me or their realtor and they come out and they're hopeful. And so although this market can be heavy and it's different, please, please, please just speak to the professionals and see if there's anything that can be done, even if it's a Band-Aid option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kayla, if, I always say if there's a will, there's a way. And people who are truly motivated and want to, to get something done, um, you know, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable at the time, um, I mean, you can, you can achieve whatever it is that you yeah. like. It's just yeah. you want to put in the work or do you not want to put in the work? Mm -hmm. You get so, what you pay for, basically, kind of thing. Kayla, I found this article, you know, really, really interesting. And, you know, Lending Tree basically surveyed, you know, 2,000 people age 18 to 77, you know, on, on their general housing center. Wide range. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was very interesting. Uh, you know, it talks a little bit about, you know, just for a few more statistics here, the fact that households with children younger than 18 were more likely to predict a crash. 55% than households with children yeah. older than 18, only 35% of people. What the heck is that about, I wonder? Uh, hmm. You know, I, I I tend to think it's probably, again, that that younger group, that younger group that maybe isn't as financially stable. Mm -hmm. You know, and hey, if I want to afford a house or if, if I'm that move up buyer or I'm trying to get into something, I need the market to crash. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of goes on to say, you know, people with children older than 18, 35 percent homeowners were likely to believe in an impending crash, 46 um, percent versus non-homeowners. 25 um, percent said the market won't crash in the next 12 months. Uh, and even those that said a housing crash is on the horizon, the majority of those individuals um, are not scared, 36 percent of which said it could be a benefit. Mm hmm. You know, then looking at property taxes dropping another 15% saying it could lead to future stability and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's interesting. I'm curious what will happen. I'm curious what the next six months will look like, because traditionally this time of year, 
is when it's slow for real estate. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen. And if people are going to say, you know what? I'm not going to be able to buy that $600,000 house. I'm going to go with the 400. I'm just curious what what's to come and what people will decide. Mm -hmm. What are what are your predictions, Kayla? What are you what are you looking for in the spring market? I think that we will see I think we will see a gentle decline. I don't think we're going to see rates just plummet. I think that we will slowly see a decline in rates probably by the end of the year into 2025. I know in the past, probably six to nine months, I think a lot of uh, forecasters thought that we would see it by now, but I foresee a gentle decline. I don't see anything abrupt happening. Um, I also think that there's a lot of pent up energy. I think people are in apartments. I think people have pets and animals and kids. And sometimes it's not just about the dollar. It's not just about that. It's about the the feelings, the emotions, the things that go with owning a home. And I think come spring, we will see no matter what rates are doing, we're going to see those people come out and start having conversations again. So like what about that. you? Yeah, I think rates are going to continue a gentle decline. And I think they're going to, they're going to keep declining, you know, through the end of next year, even if there is, you know, some necessary government intervention, you know, it seems the Fed usually lags at least six months behind, but mm -hmm. I think see rates continue to drop and in yeah. either that, or there are going to be other key economic factors, you know, kind of like, you know, the Fed didn't, didn't drop rates, but, you know, unemployment was up and that's what sent our, our big rate plummet recently. So I think looking at some of those key factors, um, you know, I, I think things are going to are going to be a little bit tougher in the overall economy, which is going to be um, positive for, you know, mortgage interest rates. I think we're yeah. going to see a little bit more inventory next year, you know, already this time right now, we seem to have more inventory on the market. I think we're going to see more people who have been kind of holding off selling, they're going to put their home on the market, uh, they're going to Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of take the plunge and say, hey, you know what, we we need to do something. We have goals. So we'll see more inventory. That's going to be yeah. slightly better for buyers. But I think with rates declining, I think sellers are still going to be in the driver's seat. And it, it's going to get a little bit more competitive, I think, for buyers, you know, even after the first of the year, for sure, in the spring. Yeah. Um, but I still think buyers are going to have a little bit more time to make a move and probably still be able to get some sellers concessions. Exactly. Do you remember the time not that long ago when it was pandemonium to even see a house? People were making offers without inspections. They were making offers without, you know, really even viewing the home. And I've had two clients in the last month cancel their purchase agreement due to bad inspections. And it makes me think, Andy, had we been in a different market, the market we used to have, those clients would have had issues after closing had they waived the inspection. Mm -hmm. So for those that are wondering, you know, and thinking this market is just terrible. Wow. Think of those clients that truly benefited because they wanted an inspection. So it, it just kind of puts things in perspective a little bit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Kayla, 35% of Americans hoping the housing market will crash. I, I don't think it's going to crash. How about you? Um, I don't think it is. I don't, I don't think the data supports it. I don't think we will see that happen. And I think that, I think that there's a lot of media out there that just grabs attention and puts people in a little bit of a panic mode. Maybe a little clickbait, even though yeah. it's, uh, it, it is an official survey by Lending Tree, who I would say is halfway reputable. Yeah, I would think they're reputable. And I think they're probably sharing, they're, they're sharing facts and truths. But um, I guess we'll see what happens. Well, Kayla, I think that wraps up episode 28 of the podcast. Have a great week. I will if you will. We'll see you, Kayla. Bye.